everybody hey uh welcome to red tv and conversation i'm peter clark and uh, don't let that intro video fool you with all that long rock and roll hair hey had to go sometime uh, just changing it up a little bit everybody it was stuck in 1987 slippery wound wet and here is uh keep the faith 1993 or something like that anyway dating myself how are you everybody good to see you thank you so much for coming appreciate you tuning in always appreciate that right that's why we're here we're here uh to share good stories and share some uh, great uh, conversation with Look at that over there. I mean, I'm, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Simple as that, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, thanks for showing up. Uh, if you found me, that's that's great. If you've come back, <laughs> you already know what you're in for. So I already, I super appreciate that. And uh, all I can ask of everybody here is here, please. Um, like and share. Like and share. We want to amplify good voices in the world, people who are doing good and making a difference. We want to do all the good things in the world and amplify, lift all the boats, as we like to say. So let's do that. And of course, just be kind out there. That's what we're trying to do, everybody. Just be kind out there and so on. Um, hey, check out the coat. I put the coat on because, hey, I'm talking to a rock star. When you talk to a rock star, you got to look like one. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to a rock star today. And I just want to give a shout out to, um, Local artists in your community, go out and, and support local artists, uh, whether it's musicians, artists, uh, writers, anyone in your community, uh, please get out there and, and support them, especially over the last couple of years, everybody, but uh, help them when you can. I ran into somebody uh, the other day here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and uh, uh, he does this uh, kind of uh, clothing. He actually takes clothing and he makes art out of it. Uh, and I just said, I love this stuff. So uh, I just want to give a shout out to that artist. His name is, uh, I call him Dove. It could be Dove. I think it's Dove. I'm going to say Dov. How about that? Dov, right in the middle. Dov Alexander, and his dot com. So uh, this is where that just jacket came from. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to him as, as an encouragement for everybody to go out and support local artists in your community. I hope that makes a lot of sense for you guys. Um, hey, everybody. Pretty pumped. <laughs> I'm pretty pumped. <laughs> I'm always pumped to talk to people that are just super, super cool. I met this person at the gathering. Here's a, here's a little promo for the gathering. Unbelievable. It's, it's not a conference. It's not a, I, I can't even describe it. It's the meeting of minds and souls and spirits that are talking about all kinds of different things. It's, it's normally about marketing and branding and so on, but it's way, way, way more than that. Um, as my guest will tell you, and she was one of the keynote speakers there. Uh, this is how I found her. And I was like, she was like a rock star. Everyone was treating her like a rock star. I was like, wow, I got to go up and get a picture with her. And, I, and, and of course everyone was doing it. So I think I scared her a little bit. I just said, Hey, listen i just try to be cool said hey can you come on my show I, i'll reach out to you and she was just looking at me like okay <laughs> so they, i think the hair went her over that's what it was i'm going to try to describe uh mj here currently serves as the global director of cultural uh, and inclusion business impact at microsoft advertising's brand team i mean that's a lot bottom line is she's in seattle and she works at Microsoft. You've heard of that company, right? Gigantic. She speaks on the idea of value and purpose. Value of purpose and purpose of values. That's some of the things we're going to talk about today and so on. She's a keynote speaker, which is what I've experienced. And she's fantastic. I just enjoyed her so much when, when she was there and as everybody at the gathering did. Uh, and I'm just reading from all kinds of things that she has put on her LinkedIn profile, which I'll put up in a little bit as well. She's a, you know, a, an engagement strategist and she's part of product innovation, uh, business partnership development, all kinds of cool stuff. Talk about equity and business strategy and inclusion and marketing with purpose and and she loves the great outdoors i mean she loves the great outdoors that's why she had such a great time in canada right she had a great time in canada and uh, we're going to talk about that as well so I, I can't tell you how excited i am to have her because it's taken me 
it's at least six or seven weeks. <laughs> you can't get her schedule. You get like a little tiny window. And I just said, I'm taking that window. I don't care whatever happens. I'm taking that window. Please, everybody, can you welcome MJ De Palma? How are you? I am so pumped to be here. So it's nice to see you, Peter. <laughs> really excited. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Oh, it's super cool to see you. I'm so, listen, it's so hard to get you. I, you are all over the place, all over the world. Um, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for that. Hey, everybody, from a technical perspective, I'm aware right now, we're having some internet kind of func functionality here. And if MJ kind of goes out, if I go in and out, um, just want to tell you we're aware of it. And we're trying to fix that right now as we speak. But it doesn't change the quality of the conversation. Uh, I'll tell you that, MJ, I got to tell you, I just uh, so appreciate uh, the the. the Again, watching you uh, speak at the gathering in, in Banff, Alberta, Canada, uh, part of the gathering, which is fantastic. Um, we're going to talk about that. But the most important thing I always want to start with is you, you and your family. The first question, I'll just quickly, everyone okay? Healthy-wise, family-wise, health and good? Yes, we are faring very lucky. Um, so far, so good. Uh, we are definitely, I think, blessed and lucky to get through COVID um, without any major um impact my sister got really sick but she oh. she got through it and so we're, we're all good and um pretty blessed so all right that's amazing i want to make sure i'm checking in with this person who's that beautiful soul right there who's that that's my partner this this is the way i point so i can point to her um her name's Michaela. yeah we van lifed it over to banff when i spoke at the gathering and this is us in the back of the van, the doors are open. And if you can imagine, it's just a snowy winter wonderland in front of us with a frozen lake right oh. before we got to a glacier. Uh, it was incredible. Canada is absolutely gorgeous country. Oh, so glad you had that experience and you drove up here. I mean, I saw the van. We're going to talk about that because van life. Hey, everybody, you can get to follow uh, MJ doing van life. So I really appreciate that. Hey, I just wanted to make sure. And, and again, um, your partner's name again. Sorry. It's Michaela. Makayla. Okay. Yes. I want to shout out to Makayla right there because that's your family. And I want to make sure Thank that you so much. we acknowledge that right off the right off the top. Uh, yeah. Banff was an amazing experience. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it was a collection of a lot of different things. We're, we're, I'm going to dig into that later on a little bit about your feelings about that. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about very quickly, though, because I do talk to a lot of business leaders, um, you know, thought leaders and so on. And you work for a brand that I think everyone's might have heard once or twice. Um, so we're all very aware of Microsoft. Um, and you talk to so many different leaders and you've worked for so many different leaders and so on. So I, I, this might seem like a generic question, but I want to understand from your perspective, leadership. I mean, we're starving for it in the world right now. What is leadership to you? What does that mean? What does leadership mean? That's such a great, I mean, it's a loaded question, right? It's I think, yeah. yeah, for me, leadership is about empowering others. And it's also about being humble and not having all the answers and being a team. You can't have a leader without a team. And I think leader leadership is setting an example and, but also uh, empowering others to achieve their fullest potential and supporting one another through you know this this idea of we only have a, a finite amount of time on this on this planet and being able to support people's passions what they love to do and what they do well and how they can bring value not just to a company but to their own lives i think that is what leadership means to me Okay, great. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I'm being able to kind of clear the path, set a vision, help someone become their best selves and so on. And I know, I, I know your story a little bit. Uh, I try to research people as, uh, as I go into these conversations and I know that you've had an amazing journey through um, Microsoft. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, coming up soon and so on. I've heard you say, and you, you quoted this in one of your um, uh, talks that I saw, and I'm not sure if it was a live one or uh, a podcast, uh, but you said, you know, you can't be what you can't see. So we just mm -hmm. talked about, we just talked about leadership and so on. Um, and I remember you saying, using that quote and I thought, okay, she knows what she's talking about just because again, being, uh, being a woman in, in, in business in general, that's number one in the world in general, then in business and then in uh, giant brands such as Microsoft. So Talk about that. Talk about leadership when it comes to women and leadership. Why, why, why is someone like you really important for people to see? Because if you can't, again, going back to the quote, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Why is someone uh, like you so important to see? Most of us, you know, don't 
you know, come up as trailblazers. Like there are definitely people who become things that they haven't seen before. So I'll just say that there are like definite trail trailblazers, but that is rare. And most of us, like myself, uh, I really look towards people who could model, right? Like, what does it look like to be successful? Could I be successful, you know, looking like I do today? And many, not even, I think it was about five or six years ago, not that many years ago, um, I look completely different. And I look like a, a cousin version of myself, someone, you know, with a bobbed haircut and, you know, someone that I think we could all identify with as someone looking like corporate success. And what happened for me, you know, and I think maybe, there you go, um, Angela Ma My Maya, um, she uh, is the one that said, you can't be what you can't see, I believe. And for me, you know, it's been a lot of men in my life, coaches, teachers, um, bosses who have given me these opportunities because there weren't women in those positions to, you know, coach me or um, mentor me and, and, and show me how to, you know, do business development deals and how to imagine, you know, driving impact in new and innovative ways. And what's happened for me is, uh, you know, the tide's turning and I'm starting to be that person to people. I'm getting the opportunities to speak on stage all over the world and also create programs across Microsoft that people are looking to, to drive more impact in the roles that they have. And, you know, some of the most, I would say, fulfilling moments when I, when I speak on stage is the after moments of parents, successful uh, professionals who attend a conference and they come up to me and yes, they're like, I'm going to implement some of these ideas you shared, but what is hitting me the hardest is that someone like you is successful at a company that large right. and you're being your authentic self. You know, this person that you have on the screen, you know, on the left, I came back to Microsoft um, looking, I, I had left for a couple of years. Uh, the culture at the time back in 2010 was much different than it is today at Microsoft, but I missed the impact that I could drive at Microsoft. So I came back and in a short amount of time, I realized there was a seismic shift in culture at Microsoft brewing. It was just the beginning of what it is right now. And it's the idea that diverse voices is very much needed to make the best outcomes. And that my, my place at Microsoft, no matter what gender, ethnicity, or sexual orientation you are, which was said by a very high up executive at Microsoft, when he was introducing himself for the first time to our business as the leader of that business, his name was Rick Vanderkoy. I always give him props because when he said those words, I realized I always was trying to cover up who I really was inside. But in that moment, I thought I found my home maybe. And it was true over the course of that initial year back at Microsoft. It wasn't just him. It was other actions that leaders and managers were taking to value the diversity that was here on our team at Microsoft Advertising. And I began to do the best work of my life. And so when I finish speaking on stage and a professional walks up to me and says, incredible ideas for my business, but you gotta keep doing this because I have two gay sons and they need to see that they can be themselves and they can too be successful. And this happened over and over again. It's, it, <laughs> it's very moving to me. Yes, because it is. I didn't have that kind of um, example when I was young in career. And so that's why I continue in part doing what I do. It's, it's speak, even though I, I enjoy speaking to some degree, it's, it's, it takes a lot out of you. And I, yes, I, I, I hope that it does that for people, that it inspires people to know that they too can be successful being there. Genuine, well, I mean, that's what I pulled from you. I mean, everyone did at the, at the gathering. I mean, 
first of all, uh, while you were there, before you even spoke, people were saying, oh, I can't wait till MJ speaks. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know this person. What's going on? Who is this person? And uh, hey, I want to play a quick little clip and you can expand on what you just said there because I, I don't want to uh, anyone to miss the significance of what you just said and how the importance of that one moment. And that's the power of leadership. Someone could say one thing at one time and you go, wow, they were speaking to me, or at least you felt like that. I'm just gonna play a quick little uh, clip and come back and you just expand on this for me. I have a story that relates to someone who dared to be an ally from the sea level that changed my life and it had a domino effect. I believe those words have had me standing here today. Uh -huh. <laughs> And that's sort of what you were referencing, correct? I mean, you were referencing this moment. So expand on that, what you mean by that, where you were sitting in a room, this person comes out, there's a beautiful, there's a picture of a, a female on a motorcycle and you're going, what is going on? So that moment I was talking about, you know, if you're listening and you lead a company or you lead a department in a company or you're in some way, shape or form in a leadership role, your words matter and you have the power to affect change and this ripple effect with how you choose to include people with just your words. And so Rick Vanderkoy is uh, the gentleman who is the corporate vice president of Microsoft advertising at the time. And he walked out on stage to this image behind him that was a Latina woman sitting on a Harley. And that really keyed me in. Like it's an image that it was, why is this Harley on stage? I ride motorcycles too. So it also was extra interesting to me. It's cool, right? You're like, this is super cool. But what is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, I had a unconscious bias mm -hmm. um, that I looking back is like a natural bias. And I think we all have them. Some biases are good, you know, like it protects us in certain, you know, dangerous situations, but some biases are harmful. This was just a bias in, in terms of, uh, of course, I believed that this is the head of this entire business. He's a white, tall man. You know, that's what my experience has been, has been, you know, historically, it's a homogenous, um, you know, type that gets to that level. Mm -hmm. And then he said those 13 words that I just was blown away by that ended up really changing my life, which was, no matter, he said, you know, we welcomed everyone. And he, he said, no matter what gender, ethnicity, or sexual orientation you are, you belong here and you have a role to play. Right. And those two words, sexual orientation, that word, that phrase usually isn't shared at a level that high or at, on a stage that big. It's, you know, it's usually generic, you know, everyone's welcome, everyone has a role, but like really, and by calling that out, I, I really realized over the years that I expected not to be seen or counted for who I really was. And I was covering that part of me up. Um, even though people knew I was gay, um, I tried to sort of present a version that I thought was quote unquote more acceptable or more corporate successful looking, whatever that means now. Um, well, sure. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> but, but I want to put it up again because I saw, actually, I saw another picture and, and I just forgot where I found it. Uh, the picture we're looking at here with the sunglasses, uh, your hair was actually more, it was longer to your shoulders. And I, I there was it. another, yeah, that was actually a corporate headshot. There's I was going to say, yeah, yeah, that was so super corporate. I was like, that's got to be on our badge somewhere. That was like, so <laughs> like, you know, and I, I recognized you, but I, like you said, you, you obviously were, were projecting that what you thought would define, uh, a, a person, I guess a female exactly. leader at the time in, within that company. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that, that's what I thought, right? And it might have been true at, to some extent in the past. And I think that, you know, there's been many studies, a famous McKinsey study, there's uh, on the success of groups or teams and, you know, diverse teams don't perform quickly, mm -hmm. but they perform at a higher level over time than a homogenous team. And that is true for you know, when you do a, an experiment or you look at data sets, if you have a small data set and, you know, the outcome is very narrow and has like a, a bias perhaps. And so it's a natural, logical jump to the fact that we all have different lived experiences. And as Microsoft, if our mission is to empower every person and every organization, 
on the planet to achieve more, it stands to reason that we need as a diverse set of lived experiences working to create products, solutions, and services that can meet those needs of those diverse human experiences. Can't say better than that. I'm going to, I'm taking that out and quote, I'll take that clip out. That'll be a clip uh, from this conversation. Hey, I just want to recognize a few people that are tuning in MJ that are live actually right now. And we always want to make sure we acknowledge people looking around. Hey, uh, Kevin, always good to see you in the, uh, Indianapolis. There you go. Indianapolis in the house. Uh, Marcello, he's always here. Uh, Marcello, I forget where, where you are. Uh, Marcello, just put down where, where you are. Um, Hi, Marcello. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a fantastic support. I super appreciate that. Um, who else is here? Let's just see. This might be this might be my beautiful spouse. So important if you can't see. Yeah, this is why visibility is so important. So like, as you as you just said, MJ, it's so, so important. Uh, appreciate that. Hey, look at that. See, uh, Peter, I can feel the passion in MJ's voice. You nailed it by inviting her to share a story. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she has an incredible story. And listen, everybody, I'm going to be just scratching the surface. So please, you know, dig in and uh, learn more about her and go find a few videos. And uh, and I found some online that people can tune in and see and so on. So I appreciate that. Uh, love this idea. And Jennifer, thank you for tuning in. Good to see you. I love the heading. Uh, <laughs> MJ becoming. That was in my, yeah, that was the picture. Reference. She'd be coming. She was becoming absolutely. So no, oh, I, I appreciate that uh, very much. You know, I have no choice. Uh, I, you know, so I'm, this is a celebration of going in this direction, by the way, because I think it's just uh, super important that, uh, you know, we have these conversations. Um, you know, again, uh, being part of the community, uh, you, you've, mm -hmm. grown, you've mentioned it already, being part of the community. When I talk to the community, I'm talking about LGBTQ plus everybody when I'm talking about that community. I mean, again, another layer of this thick, thick onion that you're peeling away. Um, it's just mm -hmm. so important to sometimes have, again, what you can't be what you, you, you don't see. And mm -hmm. so it's one thing, it's one thing, because my, my sister, I have a sister that's part of the community, and she's grown up in a very, very male dominant um, organization, if you will, and made her way to the top, which is, which is, you know, so, so proud of her. She's just uh, such a, such a hero, such a rock star for that. And I know that journey. So my point of saying all that is that it's about diversity and equity and inclusion and, and then the community, and then they see you and then a leadership role and so on. Let's talk about uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and so on. What, what things are you seeing happening right now at Microsoft and maybe some of the companies that you talk to and so on? What, what gives you hope that we're moving in the right direction when it comes to DEI and uh, the community itself? I mean, it's really a wonderful journey that I've been on seeing our company step up to so many different, um, I would say, challenges of the world. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about is our long history with people with disabilities and learning how to use technology to bring equity to their experience in the world. And so uh, we have a chief accessibility officer. And I learned so much from that group. And one of the principles that I've learned from the community of people with disabilities, and then I'll talk about LGBTQIA plus as well, is they have a saying, nothing about us without us. And it's a principle of when you're trying to build a new product or an experience or even create an ad campaign, one of the best things that anyone can do is make the effort to create it not for them, but with them. And so there's been many, many um, experiences that I've seen, like the Xbox adaptive controller as one, just one example of employees trying to understand how people with disabilities game. And as a result, they created a new controller for the Xbox console that's called the adaptive controller. And that is a you know, this shining example of building with the community and similar with, say, pride. Often companies decide, hey, once a year, we're going to put a rainbow on our logo and call it good. Right. And a number of years ago, the actual uh, LGBTQI plus community decided to propose uh, to step in to creating more of a interactive platform during Pride using our you know, privilege as a large company and use the time of Pride to raise up voices of the community 
And so instead of making it about Microsoft, we wanted to make it about the lived experiences of employees in this community and our customers, but mostly focusing on the, the employees and giving them the platform to share whatever it is they want wanted to move forward in an agenda, some of the nonprofits that they support, some of the, you know, things that they're passionate about. And that has been our, you know, way that pride has been expressed every year is it's actual employees who run that campaign, who are part of the community. Mm. And, and it's something that is being done all year round. So we not only have an employee resource group at Microsoft Advertising dedicated to the LGBTQIA plus community, but also a business resource group. So one of the things that, uh, you know, we've seen start to take uh, have traction here at Microsoft is have a complementary group within an employee resource group. So we have the, the gay resource group, it's called Gleam. And then we have a business resource group that is really about almost, you can compare it to like a consulting agency. So if any part of Microsoft wants to have a campaign reviewed um, or, you know, have some sort of consultancy on how to connect with the LGBTQIA plus community, they come to that business resource group within Gleam. And we work with them to, to help make sure as much as we can, because this is a learning journey. We, we don't, definitely don't have it all figured out in every single area. I mean, that's the, I think that's the human condition, right? Like we're all so different. We can't absolutely know everything, but we strive to get it more right. And so, right. So trying and to. And that's changed since 2010, as you were saying, right? Like obviously that mm -hmm. problem wasn't and i'm not that's not a dig that's probably just a sign oh, of the sure. time. i mean in 2010 sure that. yeah right i mean that probably wasn't something that you could obviously you know bring to the boardroom and start right. talking about and everyone's going what are you talking about now mm -hmm. it's a common more more of a common conversation which is this is why it's so important that you have a, a voice in this and so on i want to acknowledge right now though that you uh, and i'm listen i'm i'm learning all the time too i'm really trying my best to learn all the time um Obviously, I left a few letters out at it's the okay. end. Okay. <laughs> no, I want, but I want you to tell me what again the LG LGBTQ, and you said yeah. what? So it says lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. I is intersect, and A is ally, but it also can mean asexual. So, um, and then the plus because there's just so much diversity in our community. One of the unique things I think about our community is, is that. Um, well, I actually would say like that is true for any community. So like if you had Latinx, you could have all the others in that as well. Right. So, you know, at Microsoft for a while there, we were using LGBTQI plus because the A in for communications, we were uh, some experts were looking at it and it wasn't translating globally in other languages correctly. Okay. Um, and now we brought it back actually. And so we pay attention to these types of things. So for, for right now, the way that we refer to the community's LGBTQIA+. But if you notice earlier, I said I+, because I'm like kind of used yeah. to saying it just with an I+. Plus. So sure, again, sure. we're not perfect. <laughs> no, listen, everybody, this is why I just wanted to, I just wanted to, you know, again, I'm learning as well. I'm trying to figure out, I stay connected as best I can, informed and so on. And, and let's yeah. face it, you know, when you're in the world, uh, you're sorry, when you're in the, in the, any community, as you said, um, obviously you're, you're very entrenched in the languaging uh, if you don't use it every single day. So the reason why I wanted to acknowledge that is because as leaders, people who are leaders and so on, we have to ask that question. If you, if you don't know, just ask and just say, hey, I didn't understand a little bit what you just said there. And that's what I was just doing, clarifying. Hey, let me uh, do it. Let's do a shout out to the gathering. Uh, I love those yes. guys. I mean, this is where we met. So for me, yeah, they're the glue that brought um, yes. at least my attention span to yours. And as I was learning more about you, let me play a little clip. I'm going to do a little clip right now because it's super important to kind of acknowledge I love you know, your clips, by the way. Oh, hey, I appreciate that. I, I try to do my homework. I just, I try to do homework. As a, but those, those people over there, I mean, I mean, they're just fantastic. You know what I'm talking about. Top but much. I want uh, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I wanted to 
I wanted to play a little clip uh, and and uh, thank you to uh, Microsoft Advertising uh, who came up and they produced a, you had a room there. Uh, they produced a show there. Um, and and uh, so I took a little bit of that show, which had some clipping uh, or a clip of you talking and so on. And I just kind of put a little little tag together to show people what we're talking about, about the gathering and about the impact that you were having uh, right across all of these giant brands from around the world. Let me play this clip and we'll come back and talk about uh, you at the gathering and, uh, you know, what all that meant uh, for all of the brands that were there and so on. Let's just check this out, everybody. The gathering, uh, Banff, Alberta, Canada. This was in, uh, was this April? MJ, April, yes. April of uh, 2022, here we go. So this event that I'm at is called The Gathering. It's in, very intentional with the way that they named it. We need to gather. This event is really about showcasing the best work from the best brands who are doing their part in creating a better world. I was invited to actually be the closing keynote of opening day. And when I learned of the order of which my keynote was gonna be placed, I, I felt super honored because thinking about creating a mindset to go into the rest of the summit was important to give people a message in a framework that allows them to connect authentically with the other humans that are here to do the same thing. I want to thank my company for all of their support in helping me pursue my passion. We talk at Microsoft about culture as the leading indicator of our future success. My company actually has been supporting me and following my passion and so it's led me to talk about the value of purpose and the purpose of values and not necessarily carry out a company's purpose in a silo, but my own personal purpose. And there was this incredible moment for me is don't work for Microsoft, make Microsoft work for you is what our CEO had said at one time. What do you love doing? What do you do best? What creates value? And not just value for your company, but value for you. I mean, come on. <laughs> How cool is that? You make you make it look real good. <laughs> <laughs> Not hard to make you look good. Not hard to make you look good. I mean, it, it was just again, but everything you said there, and I gotta tell you, one one of the sentences and one of the statements you you said, I mean, there's many that you said really made an impact on me is make Microsoft work for me. Mm -hmm. Or you. I mean, that was the statement that was given to you. And you know, and I and I said that I said that in my brain. I said Red TV, for example. So it could be any company, whoever you work for, whatever you're doing in life. Don't work for Red TV. Make Red TV work for you. Microsoft, uh, the gathering, whatever your business is. You know, um, mm -hmm. that really just I felt that when you said it. And it was so powerful. Um, you know, you and again, I, I read you a little bit of story. You were connecting to a whole bunch of people. You found a gathering last year. You spoke uh, at the virtual event, so uh, I had the pleasure of looking at that. That's out there, everybody. If you do your homework, uh, I watched that one as well, which is fantastic. They did a great job. Uh, we had Chris Nealon over there, um, Ryan Gill over there. We have uh, Stephanie Thompson over there. You connected with Stephanie through somebody. How was that? How did you? You got called. That's amazing. Up? You know, yeah. she connected with you. No, you know, a friend of you's connected you two together or something yeah. like that. How yeah, that a, pre a previous uh, Microsoft colleague who then went over to LinkedIn, who we stayed very much in touch. And she's very uh, well versed in my work. She said to Stephanie, You need to talk to MJ. And she, and she said to me, MJ, you need to talk to Stephanie. You guys, I'm not even going to tell you why. You just, just talk. <laughs> <laughs> just figure out why you should talk together and obviously it worked out because uh you you you, you obviously you built some sort of friendship or whatever the case may be and then you got the spoke where you spoke last year and then they thought you know what that virtual wasn't enough we need to bring her back oh well, yeah last year was like amazing and that, it, just this an incredible opportunity and then this past year was icing on the cake i couldn't agree more you know what uh i have someone who wants to have a friend uh to say something about that right now uh, <laughs> uh how are you <laughs> oh my god it's you oh my god uh so amazing to see you and have you here on this incredible conversation with peter wow yes. stephanie yes. See you. Hugs. Yeah. virtual hugs it's so awesome to see you i gotta tell you something uh mj i've never met stephanie before <laughs> i was out at the gathering yeah. All I kept hearing is everyone said, you got to meet Stephanie. I mean, you know, Ryan, I know, you know, Chris, and they've been on my show before and all that, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, well, well which one is she? Who is she? And and of course, you can't track her down because it's just, well, you know. She's like actually making the magic happen. She's running back and forth. Exactly. So I could never track her down and actually find her, which I, I just thought right. that was good. 
It was so good. So it's no nice to meet you. I just want to say that first of all. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you as well, Peter. Thank you so much for inviting me on this. I'm so excited to surprise MJ. <laughs> oh, this is this is a good little reunion right here. Uh, so tell me, as, as Stephanie, first of all, um, 2022, the, the gathering, uh, very quickly, obviously fantastic turnout. MJ was part of that. You happy with everything that turned out and and uh, and 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 belonging again? I think Ryan talked about that. It's really good to belong again. Uh, tell us your feelings about uh, the gathering and, and how it turned out for you. Absolutely, Peter. I, mean, I am. I think I'm still on a high from it, to be honest. It was so rewarding to have everyone back together in person after a challenging few years and you could feel that powerful energy from every single person in the room so i'm sad that we didn't get to to meet in, in person but i was blown away from the speakers to every person that attended to to hear their feedback and how positive it was for them in their personal and professional lives so it was very rewarding from my perspective being behind the scenes and being you know having the privilege to bring that to life for everybody yeah you well let me just tell you something man you're a rock you just that was like a, that's like the oscars people i'm just telling you straight out it's like not and it's not just like a two-hour show everybody uh i mean this is three days of hardcore production and man oh man you just did a fantastic job so it's kudos to you and your team i know you have a big team with you as well so kudos to that you know you talked about belonging and ryan brought it up and so on i just thought that was really super cool uh ryan brought up the idea of uh you know belonging and everyone feeling i thought the uh, the event took a turn this year uh with the feeling the energy um norm i it's not like a conference that is for sure everybody i'm not even finding the right words to describe it it's certainly a meeting of minds and spirit and and all those things um but it felt a little bit more intimate for some reason it felt like people wanted to share their personal side including you know mj did a great job of that as well did you find that was the energy there and did you see that the turn has maybe gone in that direction Yes, I would say so. And I, I've had the privilege of being on the team the last three years. And you know, the, my last in-person event was 2020 and, and got a first taste of the gathering. Coming from a very a world of very large-scale events to the gathering and seeing how powerful that intimacy is. And I, I've seen it evolve over the last three years, especially now being back in person. And that, that feeling of belonging, you know, we don't we don't intentionally create it. it. It comes naturally just with the people that we bring together, the MJs of the world, bringing together the most beautiful, powerful, authentic people. It naturally creates that feeling of belonging. And to hear from people, they went to the event by themselves and felt like they're a part of a family and feel like the gathering is home to them is just the best feeling in the world. So absolutely, it's felt like that feeling of belonging uh, came to life so strong this year and stronger uh, even more so than from previous years. Yeah, MJ, uh, obviously she reached out to you. Uh, Stephanie reached out or somebody at the team eventually you connected. Uh, tell us from, if you can, just, you know, to, so your friend said, hey, you guys got to talk. And then obviously you, you had a chat, something sparked. Uh, just take it from there a little bit to 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 where we are now, where you're actually a, obviously a very welcome speaker, which I might say their 10th anniversary is next year. I'm going to guess you might be driving up Canada way again. I'm going to guess, but anyway, yeah, tell us you're guessing right. I'm not going to miss this at all for anything. Uh, yeah. No snowstorm is going to keep me out of there. No, that's great. <laughs> tell us about that conversation. Tell us a little bit about when you talk. And then obviously Stephanie must have said, Hey, I think you need to be part of this. Yeah. So I just, I mean, all I, all I have is who I am and what I've been doing. So I just shared what I've been up to and what I've been working on. And at the point at that time, it was marking with purpose. It was, you know, our, first party research on how to build more trusted customer experiences. And this idea of belonging, I just want to riff a little on that was, you know, I always trust my, my friends, Hey, you need to talk to this person. And it's always this magical re energetic, um, is energizing of, you know, we are always hoping that what we're working on these like-minded people that will change the world for the better. But sometimes it's a little bit of a lonely road. Not everybody is on the same train. And um, when you do get an opportunity to connect with one person on a call and you're like, wow, we are on the same page. And I have an event that you need to speak at because people need to hear what you have to say. It was just like magic. And then to your point, Peter, when I was at that event, every single person there is on the same page. It's like this, 
you know, this crescendo electric like momentum that gets created and, and it feeds me for the rest of the year. I'm going to make that claim. So I'll, I'll check in on that next April. But it is one of those places where if you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for like minded folks, you know, we work. Everyone is trying to do their best to create a, a place where they're working and it feels fulfilling, almost like it's not work, I think. And yeah. I think connecting with all these people there gives you this vision of how to do it in your own life, in your own role, in your own company. Yeah, that's what I found as well. The spirit of it uh, transcended the concept of being part of one particular organization or industry or anything. It just felt like you were there listening to other humans talk about where they're, what they are, no matter if you're at, you know, if you're the, part of the NFL or you're part of, you know, a Harley Davidson brand or so on. And, and, and Stephanie, you can speak to that uh, a little bit. Uh, obviously, Microsoft is a giant brand. I mean, that's is one of the reasons, one reason uh, you, you wanted some uh, someone like MJ to show up. But I think it goes way beyond that, obviously. Uh, what, what what, what, what is it about MJ and, and who she is and what represents why you want to have someone like that to speak at, uh, at, at, your, uh, at the gathering? Because again, you don't just pick anybody. I, I know this for a fact. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Peter. So I could take you, know, take you back to the beginning. And, and yes, we were connected through an amazing human being through LinkedIn who said you two need to meet. But for me, you know, I get to vet and interview speakers all over the world, some of the top speakers. And yes, you know, brands sometimes play a role in that. But I can tell you in this instance, uh, as amazing as Microsoft is, is, this was about MJ. You know, when I first met her and we had our first call, I remember it like it was yesterday. I have notes from my first conversation <laughs> with her because she doesn't know this, but I, I immediately got off the call with her and I, I felt just an overwhelming amount of emotion because I, I met MJ and I went, this woman's going to change the world. Oh, and no. I've met... I've met thousands of speakers and amazing people, but I, I called my mom and I said, I, I, I literally met the woman who's going to change the world. I wholeheartedly believe that. And from the moment I met her on that Zoom call years ago to meeting her finally in person at the gathering, that was the first time this year, 2022, we met in person. And she is even more powerful in person and inspirational. And so after my first call, I went, Microsoft, uh, you know, having Microsoft there is fabulous, but like the world needs to hear from MJ in here about her personal journey, her ideologies from, you know, from a professional and personal perspective. And after this year, 2022, the amount of people that came up to me and thanked me for having MJ as a keynote speaker is like, I have chills because I, you know, that is why I do my job. That is why I love my job. And if I can, you know, connect the world and, and allow MJ to be on this platform to inspire everyone around the world, then, you know, I, I feel completely fulfilled. So it, she is just, like I said, one of the most remarkable humans I've ever met. And I know that this probably makes her uncomfortable how much I, you know, rave about her, but I just, it is now my mission to, to help people here from her and be inspired because I've been inspired from her every single time we speak. And so uh, I'm very, very grateful that she's been brought into my, uh, my universe. Oh, well, listen, I'll uh, add to uh, the people that walked up to you and said, thanks. I appreciate it too. Cause now I, you know, I've had this conversation and, and this wonderful uh, setting that we're sitting there and sitting in right now, MJ. That's just uh, here. <laughs> What do you say to that? I mean, it, it is, it is, I, I know what you, I, I met you so briefly there, by the way, one of the reasons I just, listen, I just, I love your style. You're just like a rock star. And, <laughs> and I, just wanted, I just wanted to show you, look, I have all these beads too, you know, for my wrists. It's like you had like, you had thousands of and I was yeah. like, I don't wear them during the show because you just make too much noise. That's all. <laughs> I took mine off too. I just have my watch. Right, right. But I saw you walking around. I was like, oh man. And I think I don't know if you had the Wonder Woman belt on, or I was like, I was like, this I did, super. Yes. you did, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is a rock star. So anyway, uh, it is humbling to hear those kinds of things. Obviously, you must. I mean, somewhere, somewhere down there, though, you feel. I'm thinking you're feeling a little, little bit of uh, pride in the in the in fact. Uh, pride is a strong word, but. You're happy that people are embracing your message. How about that? You you said it you said it perfectly. I, I am happy. I, I'm I'm so honored. And the thing that I hope really comes out of this is that, and I think I said this on stage at the very end, is that um, you don't have to be a like me to to do this or be successful. You just have to be the you, you know. And anyone can do incredible work. It's it's just about 
really finding that knowledge about yourself of what you love to do. And, and then, you know, what do you do well? Like finding those two things and finding that intersection, that's what I'm doing right now. And making sure that it, what is that value? What, what kind of value can I bring to the world? And that's the fulfilling part. Uh, you know, Stephanie at the conference grabbed me and she's like, I, I just wanted to share with you that I overheard a woman walking out of the, um, you know, the, the big conference room we were in saying, that's it. I'm not going to do the same thing I've been doing. I'm, this has totally changed my life. I'm not doing the same thing like I've been doing. I am in, I'm totally changing my life. And I have no idea who that person was, but to hear, like to hear something like that, um, cause I have to be honest, I'm an, I'm an extroverted introvert yeah. and it's hard. Sometimes it had been two, almost three years since I had been on stage. And I, I like to get ready to do that again was a lot. And I was like, why do I do this? I was saying to Makayla, I'm like, remind me not to do this next time. I'm just kidding, Stephanie. But it was just, it was like so much, right? Like it's it, I like, because I want to, I want to do a good job for people. That's really why. And um, I want to make a difference. And so to hear that, this little like anecdotal stories of how it actually changes people's lives, it keeps me going. And um, I'm, yeah, gonna get to go speak next week in the South of France, which I have never had an opportunity to do. And to, to see someone like me, on a, um, an institutional stage, uh, you know, that is about advertising and marketing that's been around for many, many years is going to be a moment for me too, you know, is to change the way it's always been done. Um, and I'm gonna talk to the, the young people there. I got an opportunity, I was asked to talk to the young people and I'm gonna deliver something I've never delivered, which is you don't know what you don't know. Oh, Stephanie. See, Stephanie's, Stephanie's going to have FOMO. She has FOMO now. You gave her, you gave her FOMO. Uh, well, look, I'm, I'm super pumped that you have that that opportunity coming up. Uh, and well deserved, by the way. Uh, Stephanie, let me just ask you uh, finally here if, if you can sum up this this thought. Like, you know, obviously we want people to walk away with something, you know, even in this conversation here. Obviously, there's a lot of a lot of praise for for MJ and her messaging and Microsoft. But you again, you speak to so many people from around the world, great speakers, great leaders, great brands. I mean, we're talking again, everybody, the largest brands in the world, every single one of them is are known uh, within your home. Um, what do what do you hope that someone right now listening you, you know, to be again, to find a message as MJ has found, what kind of words can you kind of share, you know, with your collective experience of speaking to so many people, um, for them to kind of think about, uh, when it comes to messaging today as a leader within some of these biggest, some of the biggest brands in the world, what, what do you hope that they're going to think about, um, with some of the conversation we're having right now? Yes. Yeah, a great question, Peter. I think both of you and MJ, you touched on it, but I think my biggest, one of my biggest takeaways from MJ and from, you know, her journey has been, uh, two sides, the, the side and of MJ and the courage it took for her to truly, truly live as herself and celebrate herself and share that with an organization, I think is really challenging for people. So that, that courage it took for her to stand up and be herself in such a massive organization is probably something that a lot of people have a challenge with and whether it's a small or medium or large size corporation. So um, finding that courage, I would take that, you know, watch MJ, listen to her, learn from her. I do that personally every single time we have an interaction um, to try to be, you know, more courageous in everything that I do and, and standing up for who I am and staying true to that. And then the other side of that is a massive kudos to Microsoft and the fact that they saw MJ and, empowered her to be herself and celebrated her again in such a massive organization. I give them such an incredible amount of credit. And I think it's a lesson for all of our leaders, you know, to double down on, you know, on your, your performers and the people who are passionate about your organization, but also passionate about themselves and their journey, uh, you know, whatever that looks like for them. So I love that Microsoft has empowered her to do that and go along this journey. And I'll just say one more thing, Peter, to that is that not only is it MJ, I've had the privilege to, to work with her team. And the biggest shock 
an inspiration to me was to see how she impacted her team and the team type of people that are now involved in Microsoft and working there day to day. They are all so brave, uh, talented, intelligent, and have such an incredible amount of passion for the brand. And I, I said to them, I said, how did you do this? I've worked with brands all across the world, the top brands in the world, and I have yet to see that level of advocacy and love and passion for an organization and a, and a brand. So it's not just MJ, it's her entire team has been the biggest shock for me. So that's that's kudos to her, kudos to the, the Microsoft team as well. It's been such a such an incredible privilege to work alongside them. Wow, those, those are those are very uh, powerful words. I just want to, and thank you for sharing that. I, I'll talk to MJ about that in a second and I'll expand on that a little bit. Uh, I want to mention uh, about you, my fine friend. I, we've met for the first time now, and then I started digging into who you are. And wow, I just want, uh, just saying right now publicly, let's uh, make sure we hook up and have a conversation, okay? Because Light Up the Dark is, is still a, a passion of yours, is it not? Yes. Yes, yes. So can you please can you please just I have it running along the bottom there and I have the dot CA there for everybody. So I want to make sure I just want to make sure you don't have to go into everything. But I mean, I, I looked it up and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to talk to this this soul. So uh, tell it tell everyone just to leave them with it because mental health awareness. I know you're a champion of that and, and bless you for that, because it, this is a big conversation, uh, mental health and wellness today. Talk a little bit about your um you know, your, your website there and your, your passion for uh, this concept of light up the dark. Thank, well, thank you, Peter. I was not expecting this. So I'm, I'm overwhelmed in a great way. So thank you. I really appreciate you bringing that up. Yes. It's a, a mental health is an absolute passion of mine. I would say my journey started about five years ago um, in an unfortunate situation um, where I was assaulted and attacked uh, by someone posing as an Uber driver. And I share that very publicly because the most people go, I had no idea that that could happen or was a thing. So after a long, you know, challenging journey with, with uh, depression and PTSD, um, I felt a spark within me and said, you know what, you know, I can't change what happened to me, but if I can help other people uh, move through their journeys, then that will make all of my, my struggles worth it. So I decided to share my journey in a unique way. And I started running races all over Canada, blindfolded. I'm, I have a guide runner attached to me. And I say that, you know, Writing in darkness is very symbolic to it's like struggling with mental health. You know, you're surrounded by darkness. Uh, you feel very alone uh, and it's hard to see the light. And so I, I started running races and raising awareness and, and funds for mental health organizations. And uh, my goal is to eventually run a marathon. I was able to accomplish a half marathon completely blindfolded. So that's uh, 21 kilometers for our Canadian friends and uh, 13 miles for our U.S. friends ran blindfolded. So uh, it was, it's been a unique journey. And to this day, I get people that reach out to me and want to connect. And, and I just love helping people along through, through their journeys as well. So it's a privilege to have that opportunity to help other people. Wow. I Listen, uh, we got to, we will do this. We have to talk about that. Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing and being so transparent about that. I read uh, on the website, so I recommend everyone to go to your website um, to read because you, you do, you're, you're pretty open about, well, you're very open about it and transparent about it. And again, it, it's just, again, we're talking about the impact people can have by telling their stories and sharing their stories and then turning around and in, and using, using them as a force for good. So lightupthedark.ca, everybody. So please check that out if you can. Uh, you can reach out to Stephanie directly that way. Stephanie, I hope uh, you can, I hope you can even stick around. If you want to stick around in the, in the green room, I'd love to, for you to stick around for a few more minutes. I only have a few more minutes with MJ. Yes, thank you. So thank please you. stick around for a couple more minutes and uh, we'll have to talk because I, I definitely want to uh, learn more about what all everything that you're doing for mental health and awareness. And uh, I can't thank you enough for showing up at the last minute. I just thought of it last night, I swear. I thought, I got to reach out to her and just, uh, I, what the hell? I'm so glad you did. Yes. yes, thank you, Peter. No, I'm so yeah. happy to be here. So thank you. I'll stick around. Please stick around. I, I, I so appreciate you being here. So we'll chat in behind. And everybody, uh, please, again, uh, light up the dark.ca uh, and we'll talk again very soon. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I see your face. You pretty, how was that? That was fun. I, I started to actually um, tear up and I'm going to do something a little, little unconventional in these interview moments here. I did something that, you know, an, an amateur did is I didn't plug my computer in so while i'm answering i'm gonna go get my oh, my my energy connected just we are live listen we're no. listen, we, don't, we don't we never panic around here 
you know, I red TV. I definitely don't want to lose this connection because I lost Listen. power. So um, I'm going to guess that, that Stephanie heard that once or twice during the during three days of like, uh, I think we have a problem. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say she heard it twice, just twice. I mean, no more than that. Stephanie yeah, no more. Never ever ceases to amaze me. That is, you know, we've had so many conversations, um, and she is one of those people that. If um, the world could have more people like Stephanie, we would be in a, a real good place. Um, right. She is just incredible. And so, gosh, and even talking about my team like that, you know, I was going to, uh, earlier when we were in our interview, um, she said, you know, it's MJ really is MJ, MJ, MJ. And I was like, no, it's, there's more of us. There's like, it's not just me. There's so many folks at Microsoft that are doing incredible things. and without any prompting, she reached out to me. She's like, how are you guys doing this there? Like right. all of you, anyone I connect with at Microsoft is just so wonderful to work with and passionate. And, you know, and I think it, that's the culture, right? I talk about um, the value of purpose and the purpose of values. And, um, you know, the purpose of values is, is really the how. And, and, and you, the, uh, the value of purpose is your why. You can have the why all day long, but if you can't do it, can't execute on it with your how, we have common shared values at Microsoft. And it attracts and creates this environment that I think is the most collaborative environment I've ever been in versus competitive. And I think that's the difference. And that's the old Microsoft was the competitive Microsoft that I experienced. And sure, it can produce some results, but I think that idea of collaboration, um, not only doing what you individually can contribute as a, a one human, but building things that people can build upon and then also being encouraged and rewarded for building on others' work. And that is the magic flywheel that I've seen um, sort of crop up and why, you know, my colleagues that also created the most incredible experience at the gathering. And we also produced a show, the download yeah. uh, special edition. That's called right. the gathering. Yeah. I want to take it. Listen, I saw that set up there. I was like, Oh gosh, if I had a couple of people like that hanging out with me, <laughs> beautiful setup. And it was, it was really cool what you had set up. So yeah, the download is, is definitely, I want, I, Listen, there's, that's why I'm saying to you, I have so little time to talk to you and there's so much to talk about at the download. Exactly. Time, everybody. <laughs> I, just want to, I want to say something that we'll expand on hopefully in another conversation, but just so you know, and I mean this sincerely, um, and it's not, it's not a dig. It's, it's actually just, I just think it's really important. Everything you just said, I mean, Stephanie said it about your team. Uh, you're just talking about it with your team and so on. I, I don't know if the world, when they think Microsoft, think that. And you are that person that's striking that mm -hmm. conversation to happen. You're the, that's the spark, the match. So I, I mean that with all due respect, when I think my, I, I don't think of what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, even though those teams exist and those people exist and they do care. Um, I, I just believe that, uh, we, this is why your, your role is so important that uh, people oh. can hear these conversations. You're not the first one to say that Peter. So I, I, I hear that. And, you know, in, I think we are, you know, there's this, 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 this spirit of like, we are, you know, just trying to do good in the world with the platform and the technology and the resources that we have. And, you know, one incredible example was during COVID, uh, our chief diversity officer and team produced this incredible event that I had the honor of being one of the hosts and it was called Include. And I was blown away by what they did and why they did it. And what they did was, is they made the entire event accessible to anyone in the world. So you could log in and the event had, I don't know, hundreds. I'm not sure how many academic experts and speakers that in all different areas of DE&I speak. And we allowed anyone who wanted to learn to log in and all that content is available for free still to this day on demand. And the chief diversity officer, Lindsay Ray McIntyre, had said, because we have a responsibility, we have the resources, and a lot of budgets have been cut during COVID, so we want to share what we have to offer with the world and how we're learning. We're not experts. We're learning from all of these experts, so let's just share that. And I think this idea 
is eventually going to change people's hearts and minds about what's going on at Microsoft. It's yeah. um, an incredible place of innovation. And um, I think we're all about empowering others. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, no one will dispute it's about uh, uh, the creativity and innovation. No one's going to dispute that. There's no doubt. It's that softer conversation I was saying to Stephanie uh, that I thought I felt the gathering actually changed this year. I felt it. I, 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 my spouse, we were talking, we were like, every time someone spoke, I said, they're speaking at a different, they're speaking differently. And when I say differently, it's like, they weren't speaking, you know, they were speaking, you know, <laughs> they were speaking, there was just a different, they weren't speaking yeah. from here. There's a much different yeah. feeling. And right in here. yeah, like in, and most of the times when you talk about branding and marketing, it's, it's, it's literally, it's pretty, pretty, you know, it's, it's pretty one, it can be dimensional, one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Me. And that's with any subject, by the way. It's not a dig against them. It's a sales, marketing. It doesn't matter what the subject is. Um, but there felt like there was a congruency is probably what I'm trying to say. And for me, uh, I, I've said this before, and, and I felt... Uh, I was feeling it more within the gathering this time where, you know, for me, the idea is that your mind, your mouth, your heart, your wallet, and your feet all move in the same direction. Right? <laughs> yes. And it has, and it has sort of that congruency. Well and so that, that, that's what I felt there. It felt like it didn't feel like people were pushing a message of branding or marketing or looking, mm -hmm. this is how we did it. And it mm -hmm. wasn't like that, but you were, you, you played a big role in that. I want to also attach to, and that's why it's so great to have Stephanie part of this. Uh, she brought up something that I wanted to talk to you about anyway, because I think it's really important. And I am conscious of time, by the way. So I'm going to try to rush through the, some of these things with you. Uh, I apologize, but mental health and wellness in the workplace. Talk to me a little bit about Microsoft. Uh, what are some mm -hmm. of the things that you were seeing that are, again, moving you in the right direction for that brand? And maybe some of the other leaders you might be able to speak about um, when yeah. it comes to health in the workplace. I mean, if you go to our website, it is clearly, um, there's a section in our uh, accessibility area at Microsoft, and it talks about, um, you know, mental ability. And also in our d &I area, there's like mental health. There's definitely an attention to this area and the importance um, there's programs internal at Microsoft, uh, that our leaders have developed. Like for one, one of our great leaders that I am a big fan of is Chris Capicella, our CMO, and he does a radio show internally. Uh, and the radio show is all about learning from others lived experience. And one of the topics he covered was, was mental health. And we have real employees get on this radio show. There's also a video show just like this and talk about their mental health journey. And I think bringing that awareness that, um, you know, for me, like, I think therapy is, is just like going to the dentist. It's something that you should do regularly. It's my checkup from the neck up is what I say. Yeah. And I, I think that it's a, an important part. Um, and it is, we added a couple of days during COVID as a company, it wasn't just called uh, you know, like uh, sick days, we added mental health days. If yes. you want to take a mental health day, it's in your benefits to do so. You can just take it. And I, and sometimes in the past, I would take a sick day because I had a mental health day. Like I can't, like I need a time out. And so it's wonderful to actually change a stigma of mental health being part of our health. It should be just part of our everyday, you know, things that we do for, um, maintenance of our overall health. Yeah. And I think, again, this is just having this conversation makes that uh, more poignant. Uh, what Stephanie talked about, we don't know what people have been through. We think we know people mm -hmm. we don't. I never, i tell you, I'm the first person to say that people just don't know. I know how people treat me, for example. I bet you feel the same way, but I mean, people treat me a certain way and I'll go, wow, like you don't know me. Like you don't know. Me. I, I always tell my wife, you don't want to go in here. Don't come in here. It's uh, don't come in here. And I, I'm not saying that in a, in a joking way. I'm just telling them we don't know what people are going through and you don't know people mm -hmm. and so on. Um, hey, I want to ask you this because uh, again, it's a, uh, it's been a really scary and dark time for the last couple of years. I know you've done the best you can with, uh, with uh, getting out and with your van and your, and traveling. Mm -hmm. I know you love doing stuff like that, but you know, obviously some other people might not have had that same journey. So, um, you know, what keeps you hopeful right now, hopeful and optimistic, what keeps you, you know, in all of the conversations you either have had over the last 24 and 30 months and moving forward, what, what is it that keeps you hopeful and optimistic? You know, being put in contact with people that are also on this idea that we all can 
have an impact in the world mm -hmm. and that it's not left up to someone else. And then more and more often I'm, I'm running into people that are wanting to play an active role in creating our best collective future rather than just being apathetic. And so I'm super hopeful because of people's, you know, active participation in changing the narrative and in paying attention to the narrative that they're actually uh, sharing with the world. You know, like you said, advertising, marketing, it could be very one dimensional. But I'm seeing more and more often that it's not just, you know, the stories we tell, which are really powerful. They can change the world in, them, in themselves. They can open doors to concepts and a way of being that maybe wasn't acceptable in the past. But it goes deeper than that. It's the, it's the systemic change, the systems that are in place and looking how we're doing business, not just, you know, what we produce and who we're trying to reach, but how we do business. Um, you know, making sure that if we have a supplier program, do we have diverse suppliers? Do we, you know, include these kinds of thought processes in the systems that can then scale and have that ripple effect with our communities and individuals that in the past have been either left out of the conversation or had an inequitable experience. And I'm super hopeful because we're paying attention to more and more to the systems in place. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I, I agree with you. Like, it's almost like, um, again, we're, we're so we we have a, our system, when you say the system, the global system, if you were, we're putting mm -hmm. aids on a lot of symptoms all the time. We're never looking at the root uh, and really spending a lot of time at the root. And I think those conversations are happening right across the board. And that's why uh, that's, again, why someone like a person like you with your messaging underneath that flag of that umbrella of that brand. I think is so much more impactful and and i don't mean that anyone is is less than yours i'm, I'm referring to everyone's voice obviously but again mm -hmm. again i don't think people think microsoft that way and i think you're you're doing incredible work like that so whoever you report to uh you're very lucky uh that person you you have someone like mj <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so, i've had a, i've had a wide spectrum of bosses at microsoft yeah. you know, and i am very lucky with the, the i call them a coach they're not my boss they're like a coach so right Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally believe. Listen, I got to put up a couple things here because I think it's just funny, and uh, and it's not it's not funny. Yeah, we need to clone. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcello. We need to clone, and uh, very moving and powerful. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Up here, uh, Stephanie Th uh, Thompson uh, Brava. Yeah, not Bravo. Everybody, just you, Brava. I, Brava, I Brava. Uh, thank you yeah. for sharing your powerful story of healing. Absolutely. I'm going to guess that's my beautiful spouse putting that up. I hope it is. Um, and, and of course, uh, yeah, Michelle wants to work for you. So can I report to you? And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. we all feel the same way. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> we all feel the same way. Just uh, that's, that's too easy. Hey, I do want to, I, I know we're, we're scrunched for time. Stay with me. Cause I got to make sure I got to show a little bit more about you. I want people to know you. I mean, sure. it's one thing to know Microsoft and all that kind of stuff. And they're, that's, cool company you know big brand yeah, all yeah, that yeah. Kind of stuff. are all good hey i want to show people this uh because i loved it i i didn't know your van stuff i just i just like what yeah i, just, I freaking love that so um hey I just i've owned a van since i don't know like a 77 vw bus a 74 ah, right? VW bus a 2003 euro van then a pro master and now a mercedes sprinter and um it's i just love being able to have it's like my uh, adventure pod or escape pod, right? And yes, so I, I can get out into nature, but still do my work. Uh, I started an Instagram handle. Uh, it's it's very nascent. It's executive digital nomad. And uh, you do not working from the road and how to do that, you know, as somebody who works for a big corporation. And I love that. Well, hey, listen, you know, I do my homework around here, don't you? Come on. All right, everybody. <laughs> hey. Hey there, my name's MJ, and I hope you join me on this journey going from a full-time employee working in tech with an office to full-time employee working for the same tech company, but from a van. I started this Instagram account because I really wanted to share this journey of learning how to do van life full-time. Love camping, love the outdoors and love visiting various places uh, that I can drive to. I just love 
going on road trips. Next week, I will be speaking at Banff, so we will be leaving shortly from Seattle, Washington. It's springtime here, but it's not so springtime in Banff. This van is going to be our home for the next at least 10 weeks because we rented out our house on Airbnb monthly. Gonna be documenting this incredible journey. So glad to have you with me because I definitely don't have it figured out. I'm new at this. And so here we go. Ah, come on. How cool is that? Yeah, that gift that said happy hour, I thought it said happy home. Fun fact. (laughs) As soon as I saw happy hour, I said, I love her more. I even (laughs) just said happy hour. I was like, come on. I gotta get to be happy hour even in a van. There, hey, this is always of course. Just yeah, we know that it's all when it's all parked and plugged in. I know that. I, I know that. But I just love the fact that uh, you're again being supported by that, and I think uh, that's yeah, a Microsoft that. supporting remote work, and you know, you have a conversation with your manager to decide well how best for you to work is. And at times of the year, I will do that, but at other times of the year, I will be in Seattle and going in the office at other times. So that's the really beautiful thing that came out of COVID is uh, this idea of not just hybrid work, but inclusive work. Right. Absolutely. Uh, there's the handle, everybody. A, a executive Digital uh, Nomad. I, I Listen, I couldn't wait to click on that. I'm going to be following you. So I'm, <laughs> I'm putting pressure you on you. Your if you don't travel, just go out in the van and grab a glass of wine or something and chat with us. I think there's a show in there somewhere. I just love it. You know I what I'm saying? I think there is. Yeah, I think there's a show in there. We'll talk about that. I think there's a show in there for you. Uh, super appreciate uh, sharing that and 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 learning about that. And what a beautiful fan. So good for you. And and your partner loves coming with you. You both uh, enjoy obviously the outdoors, right? I mean, yes. coming to, coming to Canada must have been pretty pretty cool. Yeah, we got to go skiing, and it just as we saw bears, and just it was amazing. Um, extremely beautiful country, and even more so. I'm not exaggerating. The people are the best. The people are the best. They are so nice. No matter what part of Canada I had stopped in, so helpful and so warm and just genuine. And my partner and I were like, we could live here. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I just put it on the record for right now. Don't you dare come up around like Southern Alberta and Banff, which is like not literally from this place I'm sitting to the BAMP Springs where I met you is literally 90 minutes. At, yeah, at you're going to plan on hitting Alberta, Calgary, like all, just all that area. You don't yeah, dare come up here and do not not call, and call me, please. Like, okay. just, I want to meet sure. you just so then we won't scare you running up to you and go, hey, can I get a picture? I don't know. <laughs> we won't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like issues are... I don't uh, mind taking pictures. That's like... I know. I wanted to get one with you. I don't have one now and I feel really, I feel really bad. I just, I wish so, I had... So lean over to the side and then we can like pretend yeah, we'll like we're together hey and so before you go before you go we got i got it listen i just got to get to know you a little tiny bit more and i'm sorry for pushing for, i told you before we started i i can't we're we gonna run out of time i can't do 50 yeah we're gonna run out of time and stuff like that but uh hey uh, part of uh, you being here is really important to me i need to know a little bit more about you so we're gonna do a little this or that a little this All or right. that it's really simple this or that with mj here we go Uh, there you go. Uh, this or that. You got to have a little this or that. I mean, right? I mean, yeah, that's you know, fun. You got to this or that. Here we go. So uh, this or that, uh, MJ De Palma. Um, I'll say two things. You just tell me what you think. It's really that simple. Just, uh, just, just one or the other. There's, there's no right or wrong. It's all, it's all straightforward. It's all good. Okay, here we go. And uh, uh, you'll see where I'm going with this. Spider-Man or Batman? Spider-Man. So, and not to be, uh, you know, uh, the ma- girlfriend was MJ. Come on. Yeah, right. But I already know the answer to this one. I'll make sure it's not just male characters here. Supergirl or Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. Yeah, of course. You got the belt. <laughs> you know, you already got the belt. So I, I get that. Really. Mm-hmm. It's a trick one because I know you have a friend who's in a really, really super cool band. Uh, Nirvana or Coldplay? Uh, Nirvana. Uh, is that because your friend in the band or? No, um, which one are you talking about? Um, I think she's part of a she was part of a clone band for Nirvana or something. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yes, yes, not yeah. because of just her, but uh, you know, Seattle and I just Seattle, that's why I know, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love Coldplay, but Nirvana, I got it. Okay, I don't know if you did either one of these, but skydive or scuba dive, oh, I do both, and you do both. Scuba dive. Mm-hmm. you do both. Are you certified for scuba? 
Yes. Gosh, you are so dynamic. See, that's what I'm learning stuff. That's why I want to know. I'm a multi-hyphenated polymath, according to someone uh, in the south of France who's asking me to speak. It's like, okay. 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 This that's okay. Gonna, that's gonna be fun. How about this for a better age? Twenty or forty? Forty. Yeah. Why is that? Oh, yeah. I mean, twenty is fun, but forty, you know enough to know how to have better fun. There you go. See, <laughs> better fun. I love that. Hey, if I uh, come see you in Seattle, which by the way, I've never been, never been to Seattle. Can you imagine that? Like it's like such, such never, a yeah, it's an amazing place. I hear this. And I was told if I go there and I go to that music center, I'll never come back. I mean, I just, I love that. I would just love to go and see that. And of course we got to go down and see, uh, what's the gentleman's name again with the, with the, with the Kraken who was part of uh, Stephanie's group. Um, uh, Todd, Todd Humphrey. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Got to go see the Seattle Kraken. Yeah. It's an experience. I seen it on TV. I need to connect with him and actually go to a game because my previous boss at Microsoft has season tickets and she says it is just incredible. Uh, hello, Todd. Hello. Uh, we're coming down to see a game. Uh, Stephanie wants to go too, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> coming down to see, are, are we doing a Chinese food or Italian food? Oh, Italian. Yeah. Do you like red wine? Do you drink red wine with it? Do you like red wine? You know, I used to drink red wine. Um, I actually, I just, I love it without any, any, oh. any of that. Yeah. Oh, I, I just, see. there's a place in, um, in Seattle and, ah, Spinazzi. Shout out. Yeah. You will have to go to that restaurant and definitely make reservations before you get to Seattle. Um, incredible Italian food. There's a shout out, everybody, right there. Mm -hmm. I'll tag them on this somehow, some way. Hey, if we're going traveling, are we going to the Caribbean or are we going to Europe? Europe. Yeah. Do you like like older historical things? or? I, I just, I love various cultures. I mean, Caribbean is a culture too, right? Um, I love it, but I also just love the different, you know, um, the history and the different cultures and seeing the commonalities. And in, in Europe, I get an opportunity to do that more so. Love it. Love it. Uh, I have a funny feeling. I know this one, but we'll see right now. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Yeah, I'm thinking in the van, like you just at the break. <laughs> Sunrises are extra special because not a lot of people are up at that time. Very true. I agree with you. There's there's, there's a, uh, yeah, there's a room. Uh, anyway, I agree, I agree with you on that. How about this? Uh, to talk purpose, to talk purpose for a day, we'll talk to and this is just a couple. I just randomly go, Michelle Obama or Barack Obama? Oh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Really? I have to choose? Well, if you had to. I mean, if you, you know, there's two rooms, you have to pick one. <laughs> you know, that's a really hard one. But I think, I think I would have to talk to Michelle. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. She is something. Oh, anyway, mm -hmm. I agree with you on I. I think I'd lean that way too, just so you know. Mm -hmm. He always he just blows my mind. But so does she. That's what I'm saying. I agree with you. That's a hard one. I would uh, sneak off into the other room. I mean, I don't know. Okay, the other one over. Yeah. I, steal a question. <laughs> totally. I get that. Uh, how about this? Courage or character? I think character because then you can be vulnerable, and vulnerable is the prerequisite to having courage. <sighs> Kaboom. That's, <laughs> hey, that's a, hold on. That's a boom. That's a boom. That's a kaboom. Wow. I never heard that before. I just thought of it right now. I saw that you did that. See, that's why Microsoft loves you. Boom. Right right there. <laughs> uh, how about this one? One of my favorite ones hope or freedom? Hope. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to enjoy freedom if you have no hope. <laughs> I tend to agree with you on that. I really, really do. Uh, finish this uh, finally here. Uh, finish this for me if you can. Um, I love my life because. I love my life because of the people in it. Another mic drop. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I think I told you about my heart thing, but I had a heart event in December and I know the sensitivity of time. I don't know if I've ever told you that, but mm -hmm. I was at 99% and uh, yeah, now every moment in time is so important and the people that you spend it with, oh my gosh, it's just mm -hmm. so important now. <laughs> and so this is why I love spending time with you. I just knew it was going to be awesome. I just knew 
when I met you, when I saw you, and of course, when I met you, I was thinking, God, I think I scared her. So, uh, you know, ran up. You did it? Yeah. <laughs> you're very kind to me. You're very kind because there's so many people coming up. And I was thinking, I just want to introduce myself. So when I reach out to her, she won't be so uh, thrown back by. But I saw so no. talking to you. This has been just a joy and a pleasure. I can't say enough. Here. Um, and I know Stephanie is still with us backstage. So uh, stick around. So we'll go back and chat with her for a little bit. Well, I just uh, want to thank you. You do, you're doing an incredible thing here. And just thank you for shining a light on the work that not just myself, but so many people that have been a guest on your show. Are, are, are doing and so you are very special and just thanks for what you do thank you don't get me emotional but i thank you for that i'm you know what I, I, mj i'm going to tell you uh outright I'm, I'm trying to be a better receiver i'm not a good receiver so i just want to say thank you to that i'm trying to receive so thank you so much for that i really am good job peter i thank yeah good job everybody <laughs> Uh, everyone tuning in if you're watching on replay uh we appreciate that thank you for doing that uh thank you to stephanie thompson uh from the gathering uh the gathering was a, a beautiful event please check out the gathering it's called cultgathering.com everybody uh the 10th year anniversary is coming up for 2023 hello uh you can miss it uh you know listen mj I already got, listen, I'm already talking to Ryan about something. Uh, I'm going to talk to Stephanie about it. I got to be there. I need to be there again. Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I love everything. And this is why I love it. This, because mm -hmm. what ends up happening, you meet some beautiful souls. And then people. You, yeah, the people, it's the people. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's so beyond that. And so thank you everybody. Please uh, check out uh, MJ here on LinkedIn and follow her uh, on this, this journey. You better get out there and uh, make sure we see some uh, nomadic stuff with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I gotta get posting. Yeah, you gotta get posting all that kind of stuff. And uh, I so appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. We'll go back into the comments and see everybody. Um, and you know how this thing goes, everybody. You know how we ended here, just so you know, MJ. It's just be kind out there, everybody. Just be kind. That's all you have to do. Just be kind out there. MJ, we'll see you on the other side. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Let's just be kind out there. Let's be kind. Be kind out there. Just be kind out there. Just be kind out there, everybody. Be kind out there. Be kind out there. Be kind out there, everyone. Be kind. You know, as I always say to everybody, hey, just be kind out there. Let's just uh, be kind out there. Be kind out there, everyone. Be kind out there. You know, just be kind out there, everybody. Just be kind. You know, just be kind out there. You know, just be kind. <laughs> be kind. Just be kind out there. Uh, just be kind out there, everybody. Uh, just be kind. Be kind out there, everyone. Be kind out there. Just be kind out there, everyone. Just be kind. That's all you have to do. Just be kind out there. Always end the show like this. Uh, just be kind, everybody. You know, just be kind out there.